Okay, there we go. Rising of Lazarus. We're in John 11 today. This story for me has a uh, really deep meaning. Uh, when I get to the verse, I'll tell you a little story. Let's start with the word. Oh, dear Heavenly Thank you so much for, oh, and especially for this story, Lord. You know, it tells me that you knew the future uh, from the uh, past, and that you threw these little things in here to help us along the way in our journey, even 2,000 years later. Thank you, Lord, so much for, uh, for the wisdom that you, in picking the uh, stories that you gave to your disciples to share with us. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. So today we're in Bethany. Well, actually, this little map here, you can see uh, where it says uh, Jesus' teaching in this area. That's where we were yesterday. And so uh, that was uh, basically where uh, it says that John was somewhere near the uh, where John the Baptist was uh, teaching. But he gets word about uh, a very good friend of his, uh, Mary and Martha and, and, and Lazarus, and they live in Bethany, and you can see here on the map. So he's going to head that way, but he also uh, wants to uh, have a chance to uh, reach others. And I got one over picture here. This is a photo uh, artist rendition of what he might have looked like uh, during Jesus' time frame. And during the latter times, I probably... Uh, during the rest of, uh, most of the rest of John, he'll be spending a lot of time here. So pretty much, uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a long one because the, uh, uh, this particular story uses uh, most of uh, the chapter of uh, John 11. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. And it was a Mary which anointed the Lord with an ointment and wiped his, his feet with her hair. His brother Lazarus was sick. And I mentioned that story about Mary. I thought I would uh, bring it up here real quick. Uh, another story about Mary. Uh, it's in Luke 10, 38. And it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. This might have been one of the first encounters. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. So you get the picture here. Mary is uh, at Jesus' feet, listening to him talk. And Martha's in the background, like uh, getting things ready. I guess I got ready for a meal or something. And Martha speaks up and says, But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Let her therefore that she help me. You gotta love Jesus' response. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which she shall not be taken away from her. Wise words there. And, uh, sometimes it's just, it is important to just kind of uh, sit back and, uh, and uh, delve into the uh, teaching of the word and not let the uh, the cares of life. But back to John 11, 3. And therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom, is, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard when that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. So he intentionally, uh, this part coming up is kind of interesting. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. So he still hung out there you know, near the Jordan for a couple of more days. And I think the, you know, the whole point was that they wanted, uh, he knew that it was important for Lazarus to actually pass away and to be uh, definitely gone to uh, show a miracle. 
And after that, saith he to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. And now the disciples get concerned. Remember that uh, biggest, uh, remember early in uh, chapter 10, uh, that, uh, that uh, Jesus had some issues in Judea, in Jerusalem. So his disciples reminded him and said unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? And I thought I'd just bring up uh, those particular stories here real quick. That's over in John 8, 59, when we were there, uh, when uh, he was at the temple and they wanted to stone him. And they took up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. And then also in John 10, 31, uh, we just saw a couple of days ago. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. So those are those places that uh, the disciples are remembering. And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of the world. I couldn't help but, uh, when I saw this, uh, another example of, uh, of a uh, spoken word from uh, many years before in Isaiah 9-2, where that talks a little bit about this, about the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light, that they dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. I wonder how many times uh, people, when they heard this, when Jesus was walking, were remembering some of these old verses in, uh, in the uh, Old Testament. Jesus was intentionally using these verses, uh, I think, uh, to uh, show them who he was and that he was foretold. But back to John 11:10. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Another good reference I found in... Uh, about sleeping and waking up. And I thought I'd bring these up as an example of what Jesus was getting ready to show the disciples and uh, those around him. Over in 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I shall show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Well, so those are speaking of the rapture, but I think that uh, quite a few times, particularly through John, uh, John picks out those points that uh, show that he was kind of hinting at this stuff uh, even before uh, he, his death. And along that same lines, I'll mention the famous verses in Thessalonians 4.13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye saw or not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we shall all, we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Comfort one another with these words. <clears throat> that verse right there is uh, something that I rely on a lot these days. So I just wanted to mention those that uh, Jesus kind of alludes to. Uh, we we don't really die, we sleep. Uh, but of course, the uh, disciples at first didn't pick up on that. Uh, they will later on, as I just mentioned. But back to John 11, verse 12. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Now they're thinking of regular sleep, like we do every night. Uh, and so they're, they're still not getting it. So, uh, How big Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest and sleep. So Jesus has to be a little bit more plain here in verse 14. Then Jesus unto them plainly, 
Lazarus is dead. <laughs> you can just kind of see that scene, and they're all probably looking and had a really funny look on their face, like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm glad for your sake that I was not there to the intent he may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. So this was a this was a lesson that Jesus was also teaching at the same time. He knew for sure that he was going to raise him from the dead. Yeah. Him and the Father probably already talked about this. I think a lot of those times when Jesus went off to pray by himself, that uh, those were actually just conversations about the upcoming uh, period of time and what kinds of things were uh, they were going to do to, uh, to uh, further the kingdom. Just my thought. I don't know if I'm going to base that on. But... Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, good old uh, doubting Thomas, unto his fellow disciples, let us go that we may die with him. I'm not sure what he uh, was in. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Interesting that he picked four days. Uh, that's not the same as Jesus uh, uh, when he was in the grave. Because I think they did that on purpose so that it wouldn't correlate to uh, something. that. Because what Jesus did was a lot different. Uh, in this case, uh, as I said, uh, they just, uh, Jesus is going to raise Lazarus from the dead. Uh, he's going to re-die again. Uh, but uh, uh, Jesus' resurrection was to life. A totally different scenario. Now, Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. 15 furlongs. I finally looked it up. I see that word a lot. Uh, a furlong is an eighth of a mile or 220 yards. So this would be just shy of two miles away. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the in the house. And then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whosoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give to thee. I, I'm still always impressed by the ladies they, uh, uh, throughout the whole uh, gospel. So they seem to clue in to what Jesus was doing so quickly. And the disciples always seemed like they were not catching on. And Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. And I love this verse coming up. Where Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So here she even knew. Uh, what we're looking forward to now. Uh, and I see these little tidbits of uh, the coming uh, age. That So he must have been talking about it. I mean, I, and I love the fact that uh, the ladies kind of point this stuff out uh, all through the Gospels. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the light. He that believeth in me, though he be dead, yet shall he live. Famous verse. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And she said unto him, Amen, Lord, thou art the Christ, the Son of God, who shall come into the world. And when she had said so, she went her way and called Mary and sister secretly, saying, The Master has come and called her for thee. As soon as she had heard that she she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. The Jews that which were with her in the house and comforted her. When they saw Mary, they arose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. It's interesting that the, actually, uh, Commentary I heard one time that uh, people, when they passed, uh, it was like a uh, it was very important that uh, family and friends would gather around uh, the uh, the closest to a uh, deceased member. And they would mourn with them, and it was. Uh, but people that were uh, didn't have a lot of family, they would actually hire professional mourners to come and uh, and be with them when they passed. Kind of interesting. So that, uh, 
this example coming up, we have more than just Mary and Martha uh, there. And disciples, we have quite a group. Then when Mary um, where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. And Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and Jews also weeping, which came with her. He groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And said, Where have you laid him? And they said unto him, Lord, come to the sea. And of course, uh, the famous verse 35, shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. And I love that verse. And, uh, and it's such an important verse, even as short as it is, because uh, we all know that, uh, and Jesus knew right there, at this point that he was going to raise him to the dead. But it still bothered him that uh, he still had emotion. And so it's an important thing to realize that, that he was experiencing everything that we experienced. This is reflected over in Hebrews, uh, thought I mentioned it, 4, 15 and 16. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was at all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen to that. Uh, so I think it's important to realize that Jesus knows everything we feel. Now, when we go to him, that uh, he understands, he really does. Back to uh, verse 36. Then said the Jews, behold, how he loved him. So they saw him crying, and uh, I think that uh, kind of hit them too. And some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? And we know he could. So also making a point here too. And Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. I think that uh, what I see out of that verse is that, uh, is that people are still not getting who he really is. Uh, that uh, he has power over life and death. And that uh, that's why he groaned there a little bit. Uh, like uh, almost, uh, oh just wait a minute. Uh, it was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Verse 39. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. And Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. Gotta love the King James Version. Some of the words they use are really interesting. For he hath been dead four days. I think that was the other thing that's a done. He wanted to really impress upon these people that Lazarus was gone. Uh, and uh, this is the verse coming really touched me a couple of years ago. And Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I know that thou hearest me always, of the people which stand by, I said, that thou may believe that thou hast sent me. So he's saying this prayer, uh, knowing that uh, he's doing it more as an example for those around him about the power of prayer, I say. And when he had thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And this is the verse that really was a comfort to me uh, when my daughter was dying. And uh, I went to see her, and, uh, and the doctors had figured that her, that her uh, brainwave activity had been uh, had been gone for a, a day or so now. But then and, and she was being kept alive by by uh, a ventilator, and she looked so peaceful. And I prayed with her, and I didn't know her state, as a Christian, completely. And uh, so I talked to her when she was laying there, and. At, uh, this verse came to mind later on when I was wondering if she heard me. Ah, it's a tough one. So the fact that Lazarus heard Jesus was a big comfort. <clears throat> Anyways. 
I'll be in First Thessalonians 4.16. Let me see where, uh, where it's going. It says again, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So, uh, I truly believe that uh, on the rapture, uh, that we, we will hear our, her, our name spoken by Jesus. Back to John. Verse 44. Almost done. And he that was dead came, found hand and foot. We pray close. And his face was bound to go up to them. And Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. This is where I'm going to stop today, anyways. I just had two more verses uh, out of Romans and Galatians to kind of reflect back on this. Romans 8 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. And in Galatians 5 1. Stand fast, therefore, in liberty, wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Those are the kind of verses that came to mind when uh, I was reading that, uh, verse in John 11 44. And so that's, I'm going to stop there for today. There's a little bit more of the story, but uh, I'm going to pick it up tomorrow. Uh, it has to do more with the aftermath of Lazarus being uh, raised dead. And I use the word raised because he was just brought back to life. Uh, this is not like a rapture scene or anything along that line, because he will, he will pass away again. So let's end with a word of prayer. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, uh, thank you so much for the comfort you give us in your word. And that, yeah, you are thinking of us many times during that time to, uh, of things that were going to happen in our future to try to help us with your word to understand what was going on. And I thank you so much. In his precious name I pray. Amen. So I will talk to you all tomorrow.